my mom gave me some great things to look for on JW.org. And she's like in the background making stew or whatever while he's like on the computer and she's so happy with herself. She directed him to a website so it could raise her child for her. Welcome back to the channel, guys. In today's video, we are going to be um, reviewing our second in documentary that's a play on words. First part is indoctrination. Second part is documentary, obviously. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be hopping onto JW.org and we're going to be watching some of their indoctrination material and I will be giving you uh, my thoughts and commentaries on it. So if you are interested in that sort of thing, uh, then go ahead and grab a coffee or tea or some popcorn, whichever you wish and we'll be jumping right into some indoctrination material. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do in order to get access to the video. I'd just like to show you guys this real quick. So I hop onto jw.org and um, I frequently visit the site, as you can see. So it actually brought me straight to the search page. So, so you can click on, uh, obviously, the magnifying glass. That's gonna be your search tool. And then let's just type in association and go. All right, so obviously they're gonna have like, that word is gonna be associated with a lot of publications and stuff like that, but I really just want the videos. So I'm gonna click on the videos tab. And it's actually the first one is the one that we're gonna be reviewing. So this one is learn to reject bad association, AKA anyone who's not a Jehovah's Witness. Okay, so we're gonna get right into it. We must know Jehovah well. That means knowing his thinking on matters. We should welcome such an examination and make any necessary changes. For example, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33 together. Here we read, do not be misled. Bad associations spoil useful habits. As familiar as that principle is, can you think of an area in your life where it's difficult to apply? Hey, John. I know it's not your usual, but there's no one to entertain those clients tonight, so can you do it? Thanks. I have great. Till then, it wasn't my usual thing. But I need to support my family. These aren't really my friends. I can handle it. I think. We're faced with bad Okay. <laughs> First up, bad association in the workplace. Um, we are just going to, I'm referencing my notes down here because I wanted to take some notes on this one. All right, first scenario, entertaining clients. This is an example of how you could be badly associating without knowing it, okay? We're gonna let them get through, they have three examples on here. We're gonna let them go through all three examples and then I am going to um, just give you a, a, my, my thoughts on it. <laughs> okay, here we go. With bad associations in subtle ways, this may require us to ask additional questions of ourselves. Are we letting in bad association through social media? Perhaps we can think of another way bad association. Uh -oh. I don't think so. Except for some friends from my old congregation. Wow, they're not doing so well spiritually. But if I stay connected and see what they're doing, maybe I can help them. can affect us. Maybe. Okay, second scenario, social media, how you can keep yourself from bad association. Okay, let's now jump into scenario number three. Something very specific. Or maybe bad association is coming from a place we never expected. I only join games with witness friends I know. But sometimes, they connect with people I don't know. Uh-oh. Who pick games, 
I'm not sure we should play. But maybe my friends know them. So they're probably okay. It's vital that we avoid bad associations. Now, as we... Res okay, I just have to point out real quick. <laughs> so, that last one, obviously, growing up as Jehovah's Witness, uh, there was a lot of demonization of certain video games. Um, and, you know, in some cases, I will agree with... Oh, gosh, it's so hard. It's so hard. I can't possibly disagree with everything that Watchtower says, okay? Because there's some shreds of truth in what they teach. But there's a big, big portion of what they say that I just cannot get on board with. Um, when it comes to, I forget the scripture right now. I want to say it's in, in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians. But it's, you know, there's the, the whole weaker brother, stronger brother thing. You know, like, uh, you know, maybe my, my brother's an alcoholic and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to like crack open a beer in front of him and drink it because obviously that would be something I wouldn't want to do in front of him to stumble him. But that doesn't mean that I'm never going to have a beer again in my life, right? So when it comes to video games, what you watch, what kind of music you listen to, how short your skirt is, that's not really a problem for me, but for you ladies, um, these are all sanctification issues, right? So, so there, I believe there's a scripture that says the things of the, the things of this world grow dim to me. Listen, there's certain games that I really liked when I first started gaming and there's just certain games that I just don't play anymore. Um, and you know, I have my own reasons for that. Certain ones I'm just not interested in anymore, but I'm not going to turn around and tell someone else that, hey, you know, you probably shouldn't play that or, hey, you probably shouldn't watch that or don't listen to that music. That's what people think of when they think of Christians. They think of Pharisees, right? People are just heaping rules onto them of things they, they should and shouldn't do. Um, and that's not the gospel. That's not Christianity. We are to be changed by the Spirit. It's not, it's not we change and then God will love us. It's if we accept God, he will change us. That's the that's the turnaround. So anyways, uh, I'm going to get off my soapbox and we're going to continue on with the in documentary. Boom in Psalm 26. I thought that talk didn't apply to me, but can I really handle bad association? If I take a stand, I may lose my job. <sighs> but that's being anxious about tomorrow. Jesus said, so never be anxious and say, what are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? Jehovah knows I need a job. And I need to set a good example for when my children face bad association. Okay, let's give it a little pause right there, shall we? <laughs> All right. I call that first scenario, entertaining clients. Listen, I, this guy literally has like Chandler Bing's job. This has something to do with numbers and processing. Well, yeah, and he carries a briefcase. Ten yeah. seconds, you need this or you lose the game. <gasps> it's, um, it has something to do with trans bonding. Oh, 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 he's a trans, monst trans monster. Like, it just looks like he works in some sort of data processing place. You know what I mean? And, and what they're saying is bad association is him taking clients out to lunch. We are really stretching here, Watchtower. Like, governing body, are you guys just bored? Are you just bored? You're just... <laughs> you can't take clients out to lunch anymore, and you and they can't enjoy wine, and you can't pour their wine while you're at lunch with them. I mean, he's, he's not even, like, going to strip clubs with them. Or... <laughs> Again, I could see if he wanted to change his profession... If he had Christian convictions, if he would, you know, was a bouncer at a strip club or he worked at a casino and he felt bad about gambling, like that would make sense to me. But you're literally taking Chandler Bing, uh, that's what we'll call him, and you're you're trying to say, I should lose my job because Jehovah knows I need a job and I need to feed my my kids and my wife and, and you know, uphold my, my rent and all this other stuff. But I'm going to get fired from my data processing job because I took clients to lunch because they're non-witnesses. Like, we are we are stretching here, Watchtower. Wow. Sorry. All right, we're going to go ahead and get into our, our second uh, scenario here. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. My friend's posts are getting worse. Their pictures and comments. Hmm. 
2 Timothy 2.16 But reject empty speeches that violate what is holy, for they will lead to more and more ungodliness. I'm letting them share empty speeches with me online. <sighs> I will try to help them while I still can, but following their posts is not the way to do it. All right, let's pause again for scenario number two, social media. Okay, so again, I can't possibly disagree with everything that the Watchtower says about certain scenarios. There are things that I will not follow on social media because it does not edify me, it doesn't uplift my soul, it's not good for me. But if one of my friends or acquaintances says something <clears throat> on social media that I disagree with, you know what I do? I just keep scrolling. That's It's that simple. I don't have to like it. I don't have to comment on it. I don't have to engage with it in any way. I just literally keep scrolling, okay? Again, if you have a certain weakness, um, you may not want to follow certain pages, right? Or, or posts or stuff like that. But at the same time, like let's say it's a reciprocal relationship. Um, like I have people who don't share my faith, who don't share my values or any of that stuff. We're still friends. Again, I say friends because they're not my close friends. I don't spend every day with them and, and give them my, my deepest thoughts. Um, we're still, so air quotes, friends on social media. Okay, they may put posts out there and pictures out there that might not be good for me spiritually, but at the same time, if I'm doing the opposite of that, like how am I being a light in the darkness? I can't... As a Christian, you can't just go run into the mountains and start like a like a weird compound or something and, and just never let anyone in who's a non-Christian. Like, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. That's the idea. In the world, but not of the world. So when I'm on social media, you know, every once in a while, I'll post something where I have a scripture associated with it, where I'm pointing people back to God, back to the Bible, back to Jesus, um, so that is my contribution. If, if everyone's going to be in this digital marketplace and everyone is shouting out their thoughts and their desires and all this other stuff, then why in the world am I not allowed to be in that same space shouting out my thoughts, my beliefs, my desires, that sort of thing? So um, again, I think that every person needs to just analyze who they're following, but I don't think the solution is to get rid of everybody in your life who doesn't share your faith. That just, that doesn't make sense. You're not even being Christ-like in that sense because he came to, uh, what does he say? He didn't come for the strong and the healthy, but he came to heal the sick, okay? So he came to, I'm, I'm not saying that Jesus came down and he was like, sinners, keep on sinning. No, it was, he was in association with them and he told them of their sin and then told them to sin no more. So he basically came to heal the sick, um, but he had to do that by associated with him associating with them, which is essentially what he was accused of, that he hangs out with prostitutes and tax collectors and drunkards. And he was accused of the worst things possible, but yet he had association with those people and he spoke truth into their lives. All right, let's get on to scenario number three. I told mom what's been happening when I game with my friends. She gave me good ideas on what to look for in the research guide. Christian life, association, is your recreation beneficial? Who are my companions? It says, who are the ones I want to share my leisure time with? Does he have the same Bible-based values and morals that I have? Good question. I don't even know who they are sometimes. Psalm 119.63 says, I am a friend of all who fear you and of those who keep your orders. But if I only know them online, I can't know if they fear Jehovah. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 5, and notice how it reads. Really, the objective of this instruction is love out of a clean heart and out of a good conscience and out of faith 
without hypocrisy. We train our conscience with Bible principles that reveal Jehovah's thinking. There may be several principles needed for our unique problem. But when we find and apply them, we'll enjoy a clean heart and a good conscience. Okay, where do I begin on the third scenario? Firstly, um, this young man is feeling convicted because of the people that he's playing with online. Um, they're not witnesses, and, and it's having an effect on him. It's having an effect because the indoctrination is kicking in so horribly. Listen, when you're playing online, uh, if you're not a gamer, you won't know this, but I play online. If you're playing online and you don't want to hear someone you don't know, you simply go to their username and you mute them, and you never have to hear them again. That's literally all you have to do. It's the easiest thing in the world. So I guess we just solved that. You're welcome, Watchtower. All right, but here's my ultimate problem with scenario number three. Do you like how he went to his mom and then he goes, she gave me some great advice on what to look up on JW.org or in the directory or whatever he called it. How sick is that? I mean, the reason I say how sick is that is did you notice the common thread throughout the entire video? Whenever these people had convictions, where did they go? They never went to the Bible. They went to JW.org. And they, they let JW.org tell them what the Bible says about certain situations. They didn't go to it themselves. They, they kept saying, well, the Bible says. No, you're, you're quoting what the Watchtower told you the Bible says. You didn't actually go and seek it out yourself. And nine times out of ten, and I'm being hyperbolic or, or dramatic, nine times out of ten, when the Watchtower quotes a scripture, that is not what that scripture means. I mean, they are just wrong the majority of the time. And they misquote scripture all the time. I mean, they, they make the Bible say whatever they want it to say. So that was what was gross to me, is just that, you know, in the video, you see them, JW.org, referencing, what do I need to do in order to react to this situation? Um, in all three of those scenarios, they were going to JW.org for what does the Bible say instead of actually going to the Bible. And then, I mean, like you could even see it, like my mom gave me some great things to look for on JW.org and she's like in the background making stew or whatever while he's like on the computer and she's so happy with herself. She directed him to a website so it could raise her child for her. <laughs> no, listen. Proverbs 22, 6. Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. You've probably heard that verse before. Did she actually train her child there in that situation, in the way that he should go? No. She directed him to an organization that will do the, the child rearing for her. It's crazy. That, that to me is just... Oh, again, I used to be in it. So I understand. I understand that these things used to fascinate me. The dramas, I used to think that they were the greatest thing in the world. So I get it. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to think if there was any other thoughts that jumped out at me. I mean, obviously, it's it's funny to me that drinking is not um, illegal. I, I shouldn't say illegal, but drinking is not supposedly the worst thing in the world when you're a witness. I'm bringing us back to scenario number three just because I'm trying to remember certain things about the video. So drinking is not particularly the worst thing in the world when you're a witness. Um, but when they're depicting the worldly person in the video games, he's like, you know, he's like drinking a beer and he sets it off to the side. <gasps> That's the worst. And then secondly, to depict the worldly person, he has like a, a three day long mustache or something. He's got like a three day long creep stash. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> because I will tell you what's worse than being an alcoholic in the Jehovah's Witnesses is having any kind of facial hair. That is a no-no. Unless you live in a country where they enjoy facial hair, then it's okay. Does that make sense? Are we all on board with the rules here? In America, no facial hair. Other countries where they accept facial hair, totally okay. Everyone got it? It's from the Bible, I'm sure. We'll go to JW.org and let them show us. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm really enjoying you guys' uh, input in the comment section. It's actually pretty funny. It's making me laugh. So anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching and God bless.